All right. Recording. Recording. Thank you. Five. Four. Doctor, not surprising that there has been here uh, at this conference a great deal of discussion and uh, expression of concern about uh, what has been described as the militarization of space. Uh, another phrase that has crept up here is the weaponization of space. Uh, you've studied this very closely, written at length on this subject. Do you draw an important distinction between these two concepts? Yes, sir, I think I do. The reason is that uh, the need for weapons comes from something. And that something is the use of uh, spacecrafts for various uh, military functions. For example, we are now launching something like 110 satellites a month, which are all performing various types of military missions. One of them is uh, the so-called spy satellites, the reconnaissance satellites, which determine the position, the character, the uh, uh, description of various kinds of military targets. Another one is, for example, navigation satellites, which navigate uh, a missile which carries nuclear warhead to a foot soldier walking on the, on the, on the ground. Uh, the other kind of uh, satellites are the uh, communication satellites, or even the early warning satellites, which determine the launch of an enemy's uh, missiles. So you have a number of kinds of web, uh, uh, military satellites which orbit the Earth today. A lot of them have become part and parcel of the nuclear weapon systems, and eventually they will even become part of the conventional systems. The reason for that is that if you can, a navigation, uh, a set of navigation satellites, for example, will guide a weapon to its target to within 10 meters of accuracy. Now you can imagine that this can be incorporated into a conventional warhead, a chemical warhead, and it could still destroy certain types of targets, which means that you don't need nuclear weapons for that. So because of this enormous potentiality of this kind of uh, spacecrafts, um, they have become now sensitive in themselves. Because now you can imagine that if I want to incapaci incapacitate my opponent, I would start firstly by knocking down its early warning satellite, so they can't see when I'm going to launch my missiles. I can then knock down their uh, navigation satellites so that they can't navigate in response their missiles so accurately. I can knock down their reconnaissance satellites so they have no idea where I have hit them, and they can't look at my targets. So, and I can then finally knock down the communication systems. Now, because I can do all that, now I can think about how can I do it, what kind of weapons, and hence you have the weaponization of outer space. What do you see as a solution to this? Do you think that space technology has within it uh, some means whereby these problems can be uh, short-circuited in some way? For example, there has been talk here of something that Arthur C. Clarke is calling the PeaceSat, uh, an Earth observation satellite either in association with, between the United States and the Soviet Union or through the United Nations that would be able to observe the Earth and thus in some way uh, keep a very close watch on all disarmament treaties both on the Earth and in space. Do you, th do you think that th the solution lies within some system of this kind? Well, it certainly is a beginning of that because once you are beginning to internationalize, ask other people to participate in the whole process of arms control and disarmament, obviously that is a good thing. And certainly space technology offers a great potential. Because after all, between the two powers, the US and the Soviet Union, it is the reconnaissance satellite, it is the early warning satellite, which have stabilized the relationship between them. They know each other, they know what they're doing precisely. Therefore, there is no element of surprise. And that has tended to stabilize the, the relationship, uh, the, the balance of power between the two. Now, if one can extend that idea to other nations, then obviously it's a very positive thing. However, there are difficulties with that. There are a lot of political issues to be tackled before one can really start to consider these things. Uh, and. You, you may well be aware that the Soviet Union and the U.S. are not prepared to participate at this moment in time. 
uh, to work on such an idea. But we have been proposing a different kind of thing in, at my institute. We have suggested that maybe you can start with a regional thing, a regional, maybe multinational uh, collaboration. On a regional basis, one can imagine that there are negotiations uh, in Geneva on some kind of European arms control agreement. Now, suppose if something comes off there, then you can imagine that European Space Agency, for example, on, on this side, on the western side, and Intersputnik on the eastern side, could participate in verifying such an agreement. And certainly the, the the technology which is available in the civilian sector and easily available to most people and certainly to ESA and the, its counterpart on the other side into Sputnik, they could monitor a lot of the activities, military activities, by using just sheer civilian satellites like the Landsat 4. Well, finally, may I ask you, how urgent is it, do you think, that this problem be solved? How soon do you think it has to be solved? Arthur C. Clarke, for example, said uh, in his talk here that he thought that this, uh, this might be our last chance to uh, ensure that, that, uh, that space is maintained uh, for peace. I, I think this is true. It is urgent. Uh, before even most of these military satellites become really operational and part and parcel of the nuclear weapon systems, because once they have become entrenched into the whole uh, weapon, uh, the missiles and the submarines and so on, it would be very difficult to disentangle them. I, I reckon that even it, today it is hard. Um, and to my way of thinking, the fundamental thing is to dismantle the military satellites. However, that may take little time in order to get people to understand and accept the ideas. But before that happens, it is very urgent that the two powers at least sit down and work out some kind of anti-satellite treaty. Because otherwise, if one power or the other power has the capability of knocking down satellites, then that's going to really have a very destabilizing situation. Doctor, thank you very much for talking with us. Thank you.